Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers Part 23. This video contains edited extracts from my series How to Build a Model Steam Engine and shows how to make a perfectly flat bed for the engine without using a milling machine. The series How to Build a Model Steam Engine was made for my Patreon supporters only and this video is just a bit of a trailer for the series really. If you feel like building a model steam engine, I really do recommend the Stuart Models Victoria for a first attempt. It is far easier to build than quite a lot of other engines. This edited extract from the series shows how to make the bed flat using nothing more than a file and a belt sander. How to build a model steam engine. Stuart Models Victoria, part two, making the bed. I'm starting with the bed because it's a logical place to start. You need to have something to put the parts on and if you don't make the bed first you'll just end up with lots of parts on the bench. A file is quite an amazing piece of equipment and when you see what some people can do with a file you wonder why they bother with machine tools. This clip is now running at double speed because it's a bit of a tedious operation to show on a video. When using a file you need to learn how to control the file and you must hold it flat against the work at all times. The best way to learn how to use a file is to get a piece of metal and a file and file the piece of metal. You'll probably make a complete mess of the first piece of metal that you file but after a while the penny drops and you learn how to control the file and it's like having a handheld milling machine. And the good news is cast iron is a very easy material to file. Not all files are the same and I'm not an expert on types of files. I never had the benefit of an engineering training, I chose to study music instead. So I do generally approach engineering like a musician, I do not have an engineer's brain. But what I do have is lots of common sense and that's what you need. I'd just like to point out that on this file there aren't any teeth on one side and plenty of teeth on the other side. I'm currently filing the inside edge of one of the sections of the bed and I'm using the file with the cutting teeth towards me as you can see here. The problem is as I get close to the vertical part of the bed if I carry on doing this I will file a groove where I don't want a groove and when I file the vertical part I don't want to make a groove in the bottom part that I've just filed. So all I'm doing is turning the file over and then there are no teeth that can file a groove. So I can go right up to the vertical part or the horizontal part depending on which part I'm filing without marking either surface. On the main cutting areas of the file, the broad part, one side is coarse and one side is fine. So in this one simple tool you have quite a lot of flexibility. Then of course there are the different filing techniques. This is called draw filing when I'm using the file from side to side rather than back and forth. Shock horror, what's this? This is a linisher or belt sander. And just like filing, once you get used to how this thing works, it's very useful. Because obviously it imparts a ground finish to the work, but you have to be very careful. This is dicing with death. If I do this wrong, I could remove a chunk from the casting. But I'm well versed in the use of a belt sander or linisher because I've used one for years. I only use the belt sander to remove a great big lump of cast iron on the end of the bed. I could of course have used an angle grinder but they're a little bit brutal for this job. The humble file is the best tool to use. In this clip I'm using a needle file just to clean up the inside edges. I'm only using the needle file lightly because I don't want to make a groove in the corners. I'm using the needle file just to add a little bit more definition in these areas of the bed. You'll be pleased to know that not all operations on this steam engine build are going to be done by hand. Quite a few of course will be done on machine tools, but I'm not going to presume that everyone has one of these. This is my old milling machine, it's not terribly good but at least I have it and it is a milling machine. Milling machines are expensive and these are very cheap. So if you haven't got a belt sander and want to build a steam engine like the one I'm showing you how to build, it's probably a good time to buy one. Health and safety warning, using machine tools can be very dangerous. Always read the manufacturer's instructions and wear protective equipment. What I'm showing at the moment I'm sure will upset some experts. This is not model engineering, 
This is not machine tool work, no, it's a belt sander. Because I really am not presuming that everyone who wants to build a steam engine owns a big milling machine. It would be very nice to have a really big milling machine in the workshop, then clamp the bed to the milling table and take a facing cut to get it nice and flat. However, I can get it nice and flat on a belt sander or linisher. It all depends on how you approach the job. One vital piece of equipment that you need in the workshop is a flat surface. This is a surface plate. It's not a proper surface plate. It was the table that came off an old engraving machine. But it's flat, and when I put the bed of the Victoria on the surface plate, you will see that it doesn't rock about. It is very flat indeed. And if you don't have a surface plate, you could use the lathe bed. That's generally pretty flat. Alternatively, you could get hold of a piece of plate glass. That's also flat. I think it's time I wash my hands. Working with cast iron is a very dirty job, but I like getting dirty sometimes. Right, back to the filing. This time it's on the bench, and I'm using a very fine needle file. All I'm doing with the needle file is removing any sharp edges. While the casting is on the bench, I'm having a quick look at it. And a word of caution here. When drilling the holes in these mounting lugs, do not assume that these casting marks are in the centre of the mounting lugs, because they often are not. I'm not quite ready to drill the mounting holes in the lugs just yet. And instead, I would like to show you this really useful piece of workshop equipment. They're as old as the hills, and this is called a height gauge. And there are many different ways to use this. For instance, you can use one of these gauges for marking out. All you have to do is use a ruler down onto the surface plate, and set the gauge pointer to the measurement that you require, and then you can use it as a scribing block. For this application, I don't need to use it as a scribing block. I'm using it in this case to just compare the height of these mounting points on top of the bed. And these haven't been machined at all, I've just cleaned them up on the linisher. And out of curiosity, I'm just checking how far out they are with each other. And you will note, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not reaching for the milling machine. It will be a very simple job to now clamp this casting on the milling machine table and just skim across the top of these mounting blocks. So if you do have a milling machine and know how to use it, that's the way to machine this bed perfectly level. But what if you don't have a milling machine, as I mentioned earlier? Well, there are other ways to do it. I always liked the teachings of LBSC, Lillian Lawrence, who wrote in Model Engineer. I spent a lot of time studying the way he approached things, long before video, long before the internet, and long before computers. In the days when I used to read the instructions that LBSC put in the Model Engineer magazine, I would be in my early teens. LBSC had a style of teaching that I always found very easy to understand and very encouraging. Some of his contemporaries, however, didn't quite see it this way. And they wrote in an odd kind of a style, sort of a one-upmanship style. Oh, you need to have one of these and you need to do it this way, and if you don't do it this way, it's not going to work, and you need one of these and one of those and one of these, etc., etc. And the attitude that came across in the writings of certain people really did intimidate me as a beginner. But LBSC style was entirely different, and that made me think, yes, I can do this. And now, all these years on, and I'm sure I'll be contradicting on this, but it really doesn't matter, this is not rocket science. Well, certain aspects of engineering could be classed as rocket science if you were making rocket engines. But I'm making a steam engine, which is slightly different. So after levelling the bed, as I showed earlier, using the belt sander, and checking that it was level on the surface plate, I'm now using the micrometer to accurately measure the distance between the bottom of the bed and the top of these metal pads. And there's about a five thou discrepancy. And that's from a belt sander. Oh, and a file. Yes, I used a needle file as well. I just wanted to show that it is at least possible to get very near the perfect dimensions that you require using just a belt sander and a file, and some sandpaper, and a surface plate, and a surface gauge, and a micrometer. I'm not being flippant about this. You do, of course, need certain tools. It's essential that you do have some twist drills, and also it's essential to have taps and dies. And of course a drilling machine is quite a useful thing to have as well. I'm currently using my drilling machine, 
with the centre drill fitted in the chuck to start drilling the holes in the mounting lugs. Fitted in the cross vise on this drilling machine, and I must say that this cross vise is not accurate in any shape, way or form, other than the fact that it is level, I only have this cross vise as a safety feature, just to hold pieces of metal, not big ones like this, this is not going to spin round with such a small drill, but for drilling small pieces of metal, I do not want them to spin round and cut my fingers, because as I'm a keyboard player, that would cause me great problems. And you may notice that there's a piece of metal sticking up between the jaws and the piece of mahogany that I'm using as a pad to drill on. And in this situation, I'm just using this piece of scrap metal as a stop so that I can push the bed against this stop when I'm using the centre drill. And now that I know that all the holes are in the correct place, I've fitted a twist drill. It's a 530 seconds twist drill. The finished size will be 3 16 But if you read the text that is on screen, it explains why I'm doing this. And the reason for drilling through with a smaller twist drill is because if I drilled through with a 3 16 drill to start with, then if the holes were in the wrong place, I would have to file them out and really enlarge the holes, and subsequently the mounting lugs would be weak. In this clip, I'm using a square, just to check how accurate these holes are. And they're pretty accurate, I'm quite pleased. One of them is a fraction out. And I really do mean a tiny fraction. When I look at the mountain lugs from underneath, they're not all the same shape anyway. But I'm going to use a needle file and just slightly correct the hole. I don't need to do this, may I add. I'm doing it for the purposes of the video and not because I am incompetent. And as can be clearly seen by the small amount of iron filings on the bench, I'm hardly removing any material at all. And now it's back to the drilling machine to drill the holes in the lugs the correct size. This is a 3 16 of an inch diameter twist drill. Why 3 16 of an inch? That's clearance size for 2BA, because I'm going to use some 2BA studs to hold this bed down onto the finished plinth. And so to recap, I've managed to make this part by just using a file, a belt sander and a drilling machine. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.